quadratic formula. Last way of solving a uh, quadratic that we're going to talk about in here. It's a uh, it it works every time. Okay, if you do it correctly, uh, that you can always use quadratic formula. Uh, we can't always factor. Factoring only works when the numbers are a certain way. Uh, square roots. When's the only time we can use square roots? When there's a square, uh, when there's only a what? What kind of variable situation do we have to have for us to use uh, square roots to solve? There can't be a what? Plain x, right? So you got to have something that's like ax squared, you know, plus c. You got to have something like that to do uh, square roots. Uh, if it's factoring, the a times c and the b have to work a certain way. Quadratic formula works no matter what. Okay, so it's it's kind of the the catch all. Uh, those other methods are important because they can speed you up. And as we get into uh, we're going to do some more stuff with graphing quadratics next, but as we get into higher degree polynomials, you want to be able to pick the quickest way to solve the quadratic once you get there because that's the last step in solving a higher degree polynomial. So those other method, methods are really good for certain situations. Quadratic formula is kind of that thing that you use if nothing else works. Okay, It's, it's like the big hammer. If, if none of your screwdrivers or wrenches work on it, you just go get the big hammer and knock knock it out and it works. Okay, the quadratic formula is that. Quadratic formula is a lot like factoring in that when you solve it, your quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c has to be equal to zero. Just like if you're going to factor it. So you're going to get it equal to zero first, and then you can do quadratic formula. And quadratic formula is this x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All of that divided by 2 times a. Okay? So the entire thing. You should have, should have seen this before. This is, shouldn't be new at all. Okay? Um, if you have trouble memorizing that, you can go to my YouTube channel and find one of the Algebra 1 lessons where I sing it. You can, you can do that. So uh, if you had me for algebra one, you, you, you've heard it before. All right. Part of that quadratic formula is this thing we call the discriminant. The discriminant is B squared minus 4AC. It's the stuff underneath the square root. Okay. And that discriminant tells us how many solutions and what kind that that problem has, okay? Because it's under the square root, it can decide those things. If the b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, what kind of number is that? Is What kind of number is less than zero? It's a negative number, right? So if there's a negative number underneath the square root, what's that gonna mean about the answers? They're gonna be what kind of numbers? When we take a square root of a negative, what comes out? The i, so that makes it a complex number. So if the b squared minus 4ac is negative or less than zero, then that gives us two complex solutions. That's one of the things that you need to know is how many solutions and what kind. So if it's negative under the square root, we're going to have comp two complex solutions. That's one of your practice things is knowing that. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, what that means is we have one real solution. Okay. One real solution if b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. Because when you add zero to negative b, you get negative b back. When you subtract zero from negative b, you still get negative b back. So it doesn't create two separate answers. The last situation is if the b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, which is what kind of number? Positive. Okay, if it's a positive number, that means we're going to have two real solutions.
That positive one can also help us uh, know if it's a rational solution. If it's a perfect square, that means that it's going to be too rational. Solutions. So like if there's a 25, if B squared minus 4AC ends up being 25, then what that means is your answer, when you simplify the square root part, it's going to be a nice easy number. And you could work that out and get rational numbers, numbers that can be written as fractions. Uh, what that also means is that that, polyno that polynomial or that quadratic would have factored as well. If you get a square number for B squared minus 4AC, then you're your quadratic will have would have factored if you wanted to solve it that way. So you could check it by doing factoring would be an, another way of thinking about that. Okay. So knowing those things that about the discriminant, the discriminant discriminates what kind of answers you've got. That's what it does. Okay. So if it's negative, we're going to have complex solutions. If it's equal to zero, we're going to have one answer. If it's greater than zero, we're going to have two answers. We also get a clue here if it's a perfect square, positive perfect square, then we're going to have two rational solutions out of that. So that's, that positive case uh, is the more, I guess, normal case, and we can, we can work with that a little bit more. All right, let's look at some examples and, and see if we can just apply this stuff. All right, so we're going to find the discriminant. then solve, okay? So we're gonna practice with that discriminant a little bit here and then and solve the quadratic. X squared plus three X equals two. We'll do an easy one to start with. Really easy one, okay? Well, if we're gonna solve that by quadratic formula, the whole goal of today is doing that, uh, what does it have to be equal to first? Zero. So we just got to do that work. We subtract two. We get x squared plus three x minus two equals zero. In my algebra one classes, when we're talking about this, and it's usually like you know February, March, when we start talking about this stuff, I always make them list what a, b, and c are. And that way, when I go back and, and you know they turn a problem in. I can check if they can't list A, B, and C correctly, they don't have a chance of plugging it into the formula correctly. So a lot of times that's helpful to, to list that uh, for a little bit just to make sure. So what's A in this one? So whatever's in front of X squared. So what's in front of X squared? One. What's B? Three and C? Negative two. Make sure you carry that sign with you when you do that. That's a common mistake is to to just pull a two instead of taking the negative with it because it's negative two. Okay, so A is one, B is three, and C is negative two. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find that discriminant and I'm just gonna abbreviate discriminant B as BISC. So discriminant B squared minus four AC. B is three, four times A times C. And we're working that out just to get the answer out of that. So that'd be 9 plus 8, which is positive 17. What does this tell us about our problem? What kind of solutions do we have? Two real ones. Two real solutions. That's what that means. Okay. Now, here's the beautiful part. We've already found the discriminant, so we don't have to rewrite all that B squared minus 4AC mess when we do the quadratic formula. We're going to just go X equals negative B. So the negative B would mean what? Negative 3 plus or minus the square root. And here's where the B squared minus 4AC stuff comes in. We've already done that part. It's 17. So it's plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2 times A. Okay. 
All we got to do now is simplify that a little bit, if possible. Okay. So we look to simplify the radical just like we did before when we were solving by square roots. So will 17 break down? No, it's prime number, so we're going to leave it square root of 17. We're just going to work this bottom part out. It's 2 times 1, which is 2. And then I'm going to split it up to be negative 3 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2, just like that. That, and we're done. There's nothing we could do that when we start graphing these uh, next week. We will probably get some decimal approximation for that. Uh, but today, this is what I want to you know just leave it stamped you know, in the in the exact form out of that. But we'll do decimal approximation when we go to graph it, so it'll will make sense. Where's that at on the x-axis, kind of thing? Okay, easy stuff today. This is it's a formula. And you're just plugging into it, you know, putting the numbers in where they go. All right. Let's try x squared equals 6x minus 4. Is that one even ready to solve in any way? No, what's it need to be equal to? 